and you have to teach people. If two people come in together and they present you with such and such and such, they might be on the same team. They're not used to the stuff like that. So we have to teach them all of those type of things. We have to teach them how to maintain. Just take it easy. You just picture where you want to go. You get an agreement with everybody and learn to look and see how many people or which people keep moving in that direction. You got to watch what people are saying to each other. You know what I mean? Because when you up here by yourself, they're all out there uh, with each other. So you got to, you know, all of this stuff, you got to have it down. You don't have to see everything. That's what tafweed is. Allah hooks you up. Uh, I wanted to try to explain it, but uh, it's kind of like this. It's kind of like this. You know, when you read a whole lot of, uh, like, uh, the, the whole Quran during Ramadan and stuff like that, how for a few days after Ramadan, it's all right in the front of your head, but you can't keep it all up, up there. It, it just drifts back, and then certain ayats as you go along, you're living the Islam. But you can't remember all of that stuff. You know, uh, day to day. Tafweed is when Allah lead and guide you with exactly what you need to get exactly where you're going. Every time, all the time. And Allah will send you off this way and have you switch around, zoom, 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 and you go on right back that way again. <laughs> but you didn't plan it like that because it's too complicated. You know what I mean? It's too complicated. It, you, Allah will have you saying things to people all the time to get a certain response. And everybody looking at you thinking that you initiate that conversation, what well, you are. But you can be, yeah, let's say the best way, you can be guided, that's all. That's what we ask for, right? That's what we be asking for in all our doers. And the last thing I want to say is it actually works. It, 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 it actually works. That you don't have to know uh, that's what tafweed is. Tawakul, basically, you make your plans and you trust in Allah. Tafweed is you turn everything over to Allah. I mean, you don't stop planning. You sit here with a whole 10 pages of plans. You got to play a plan, but Allah is hooking it up. You're not doing it. You're just a vessel at that time. Uh, uh, I can't explain it like it is, but it's kind of an automatic pilot, and that's why you can't get trapped. Because Allah knows where all the traps are, so Allah send you over there. <laughs> Allah have you say something to Johnny Boy, da, 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 da. and then Johnny Boy says something to so and so, and they done forgot what they said. A boss man trying to trick you, and he got too many people involved. Boss man can overload. He can have so much information on you, the idiot is overloaded. And you get to check him out too. He said, well, boss man, because remember, all systems have blind spots every day. Don't worry about it. They got them. Everything has blind spots. It's just if you know where to look and how long to look and 
how to test. A lot of tests, you can't think them up. Well, I have you tested, and I'm telling you, you can wake up in the middle of the night and say, well, I'll be down gone. And it happens all the time. So, just between us, when we be talking about psychological guerrilla warfare, it does work. But a nigga ain't doing it. Absolutely not. That's why the white man is confused. He don't believe in God. And he said, well, niggas do this, niggas do that. And niggas don't do that. Right? In our case, we don't do nothing that he say. <laughs> nothing. Pretty girls, everybody like pretty girls. Nigga ain't no monk or nobody like that, right? But discipline, self-control. Shoot, I ain't married to that lady. There ain't nothing I can do about it. I take one more peek, but that's it. I ain't gonna peek no more. That's it. Finish. <laughs> right? I'm telling you, look, was it last week? I'm telling you, the prettiest lady I seen in a long time. Come stolen right into that. I took the kids to what's that? I have. And if they know where you're going, they can set you up. You know, if you say, Hey, I'm going to IHOP or I'm going to Starbucks. You know what I mean? Right. That means they can have, they can get there before you and they got everything when you get there or they make sure you get there. Not that I was paying no attention. But you can't help but pay attention and sit right there across from you all the time. I said, that's a, a pretty lady. And I ain't paying no attention to that lady's build, that, uh, that stuff like that. But ain't nothing you can do. You don't even want to do nothing, but it's like admiring a pretty flower or something like that, right? You don't want to talk to the flower. You don't want to hold hands with the flower. It's just a beautiful flower or a beautiful horse or a beautiful this. Man, that's a beautiful car. I don't want to drive the thing. You see what I mean? But hey, that's nice. That's what a lot do for you. They can't do nothing with you. That's, everything is what it's supposed to be. Okay, now other people, the California crew, they see anything they like. I said, say that. I'll get your phone number. They all the time. That's all they do. They, it's not. It's like ethics, morality, all of that stuff. They don't use it, and it kills them. It's to run them crazy. They have done nothing out there. All they are is calling, thinking that the dumb stuff they say and do affects you. I said, man. I said, I sure want to help y'all, but I'm not going to slow my life down to, you know what I mean, to bother with, with you unless you want to come. You want to straighten out? Good. We'll get together. Okay, are there any questions or comments? As usual, I went all the way around everything I plan to say, but Allah's in charge of that too, because you can say it, what's needed to be said. At that time, I firmly believe in. Are there any questions? Are there any comments? Um, yeah, someone asked uh, in the chat, uh, what was what was the top seer of the uh, you were reading from on the topic of um, inspiration? Topic the paper that you read. Yeah, the paper about, you read from about Wahi and inspiration. Yeah. Oh, that's just a piece of paper that came out of a, a book called The Religion of Islam okay. by Alana Muhammad Ali. I find. Uh, uh, that's, uh, does anybody remember that book? The religion? Uh, what about Malana Muhammad Ali's translation of Quran? Yeah. Technically, the Lamb used to suggest we read that. That's one of the best, except for two or three uh, footnotes that deal with Mujeddid uh, and they got Jesus coming down off the cross. 
living to be 120 years old, he migrates to Kashmir and he changed his name to Yusuf. Other than that, it's wonderful. No, it's, it's, it's good translation. It, it's the reason I know because when we studied a different translation, we would read and it was Sudanese brothers studying with us and they said, that one right there is closer to our standard uh, Mufasa's Tafsir and uh, okay. This is um, page uh, 205 in a section on revealed books. And that's a section, uh, Revelation to Man Granted in three ways. And our main talk was about the two ways that's open to, uh, to all of us. And we mentioned uh, it has to be real because waswasa whispers into the hearts of men. So the other side is the whispering infusion of good thoughts and good visions, ruya, dreams, kashif, uh, secrets, stuff like that. Yeah, visions, ilham. The one I'm most uh, comfortable with is ilham. Ilham is the second stage of revelation, but it's open to everybody. The first things coming to you in a flash, you know, and it answers a lot of questions, that's open to everybody. Ruya, uh, dreams, visions, and hearing something from behind a veil, but the, the veil is a trance. You're not woke all the way, you're not all the way asleep, but a message is coming through. That's open to everybody. That's open to everybody. Uh, the, the thing I'd like to say about that too, uh, it's just like weightlifting. The more you lift the weights, the stronger you get. Until you get old and you want to just do a certain amount. But the better your character, the better you, the harder you try for goodness, clearer things get, the better it gets. And that's why I say we want our brothers to try it. And once you try it, there ain't nothing else, nothing else operates like that. You know what I mean? It really, really works. So was there any other questions? If not, I'd just like to remind everybody again uh, about uh, of course when you get married it perfects half of your faith. So the general state of the human being is to be paired up with another. And even the Quran allows as many as four wives. But remember, so many people were being martyred at the time. And the standard marriage around the Muslim world is uh, was one wife. And for anybody that thinks uh, that maybe two is better than one or three is better than one, hang out with some of the people that have three or four wives. Just hang around. See what's happening. Yeah, man. People are really happy there, They're as happy as they can be. So. If the goal is happiness, remember, 
Amen. In this life, if you ever get to a state of real happiness, it's a natural high and you can't come down. It ain't like snorting cocaine or smoking weed. You know, you go up, somebody asked me something the other day. I said, no, I, don't, I wouldn't want to be uh, uh, that kind of high because it would bring me down. You know, it would bring you all the way down because number one, you ain't supposed to be doing it. That's already going to bring you down. And number two, you go up right here, but you always come, you don't come right back down the same spot. Never. You always come back down over here or over there somewhere. That's why the more you get high, the, the more off base and off center you get. Because you don't come back down in the same place. You know, you just go up and come down. You know, and you always come down. The Islamic high, you don't come down. You just kind of sixty percent a day, eighty percent. You just kind of just some metal like that, and you know. And after you, after it kicks in, ain't nothing nobody can do. Nothing nobody can do. The last thing I'd like to say now, when I say there's nothing nobody can do, if they take me to jail and they handcuff me behind, you know, at my age, pretty soon my shoulders are going to ache. So they can do that. But they got to take the handcuffs off sooner or later. Right? So there's things that can make you temporarily uncomfortable, but they can't do anything. When, you, when you're not afraid of the system, you're going to be happy because you are not afraid. To lose fear, hey man, anybody would give an arm and a leg not to be afraid of nothing but a lot. Now, if you fear a lot, guess what? Allah is our Rahman, our Rahim, right? Allah's mercy outweighs his wrath. Right. You you home free. I'm like that don't mean that you just automatically got a ticket to heaven or nothing. But if you're trying, Allah know you're trying, right? You're really trying. You ain't trying to be slick because you can't sleep a lot. Right? Unless you're crazy. If you think you can pull something fast on a lot, then keep Give it a shot to see how it works. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay. So, alhamdulillah. Are there any more questions or comments? Is everything clear that we mentioned? Clear. Okay. Alhamdulillah. So, Khadija, if you listen, you want to call me tomorrow, go on, give me a call. Remember, girl, I'm going to help you. I told y'all in 2014 in the front of the mosque, remember that? That I was going to help you. Why did I say that? Because you need help. You need help bad. You need help. I don't care what you think. You need help. And everybody knows it. Everything I just said today about you, about Abdul Malik, uh, don't you hear the sound of laughter back there? That's people laughing at you, or laughing at y'all. All the work, all the energy, and all the stuff, the foolishness y'all did, everybody laughing at you. You haven't did anything to contribute to the future of humanity. Can you imagine that? I'm not saying you're lost, or people say loser stuff. We don't talk like that. Because you always got a chance, you know, at uh, kicking back. The door is never closed. You know, we ain't going to close the door on y'all. Uh, because Allah didn't close the door on us. Do you know what would happen to us if Allah would have closed the door on us? We'd have died with all the other niggas in 69, 68. Stuff like that.
that guy. We would have never had a chance. Can you imagine? We wouldn't know where Machu Picchu is. We would have never saw the pyramids. We wouldn't know where Mosa Tundi was, uh, the big waterfall, Lake Victoria. We wouldn't know none of that stuff. We wouldn't know all the people. You know, we would have went away from here without even having a chance. Now, what we're saying is, you just get on board and just try to do right. Just read put a list of rights and wrongs and try to do as much right as you can. It'll be hard at first as much as y'all been messing up, but you know, you can change your habits from bad habits to good habits. This calls it positive addiction. Positive addiction. You're addicted to good things. Running, lifting weights, reading and studying. You know, you can get it right. You get addicted to good things. It's called positive addiction. Now y'all addicted to foolishness. And, you know, you've been acting maybe damn fools. You've been acting fools. That's what you've been doing now. You have to look in the mirror and face the facts. Just look in there and say, yes, I've been a fool. That's what we did long time ago. I said, boy, this ain't no fun. But I've been a fool. And then you start making improvements a little bit at a time. And pretty soon, a lot of shit. So thank you all very much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.